because it is at the end of the day, so you saw a lot of, it was a lot of information to take. I saw you saw really how different programming model, and I already removed my badge. Good. So how different programming model did tackle this big problem of using GPUs. So now, yeah, let's just have a chat and maybe we can sit under some chair so we're not stay. So I prepared some some question, but uh, the goal is to be a little bit interactive, because I know when we are in this big audience, sometimes you have some question, and maybe you don't want, or you're, you're a little uh, afraid to ask. So please don't hesitate. We we all learn. Abby, come. No, no, no. Okay. And uh, Robert also, yeah, if you want to try. Yeah, one sec. So does have any somebody have any general comment to ask uh, something? Uh, as of views of which one should I use or something like that. Maybe towards this year. Okay, so I will ask, so. Oh, so maybe I can ask all of you or those guys. So, so if you are a new developer, you know nothing, which programming model you should use or do you have any, and you cannot say yours, right? <laughs> so do you have any tips to how to choose or maybe if you are more, deep into C++ or how did you tackle this choice? So you will want to start answering this question. Please go ahead. Okay, so I'll, I'll throw the first punch. Um, so I, f I think some of the consideration you should have, I mean, you, you've, you've seen that we are more than just a programming model. We try to build um, um, a kind of like a tool chain, right? You have math libraries, you some you know some support, some other support, and um, uh, this is really what you should be looking at. Um, the community. So we all have uh, you know a broad community. How much? Um, confidence you have that your use case is going to be covered, that your voice is going to be heard. Um, that's this kind of thing you should be uh, you should be looking at, in in my opinion. Um, oh, am I, I think I'm still okay. Uh, I kind of view this as like the Vim or Emacs debate because <laughs> we accomplish a lot of the same things, which is good. Um, but it's just like your preference of what, uh, what feels most comfortable to you. Um, let's see, I can only talk about like some of my own experiences only using Raja. I haven't really used Cocos, um, and I've played around with Sickle, but, uh, not, uh, in any deep way. Um, when I use Raja, um, it, uh, it feels like, uh, I can very incrementally, uh, change my code uh, um, to, to become Rajified uh, at my own pace, right? And I don't need to use all these other things like umpire and chai until I truly need to, you know, interact with other libraries or something like that. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys have a way to do this as well, uh, but I'll, I'll let you guys speak on, on that. Yeah. Um, so my take on this is, as an application programmer, I would see what's the best and fastest time to solution um, for a science problem, because that's all that matters, right? So one should factor in how much time one should put in to learn the new programming model. If you hit a roadblock, how much time would you expect it to resolve it? And and the third is how much time would you invest to maintain it over the years? It's not like today you write it, run it, publish the results, forget about it. So uh, me uh, working with few uh, application programs, so it's, it's about this feasibility study, which programming model would uh, have this least cost or the cost uh, effective and actually to produce the, the science. Uh, that's my take. Yeah I, think, yeah, I think it's a really good point. It's about the more the community and the resources you have access, right? So if the guy next door, it's a Cocos X player, just use Cocos, I guess. Or if uh, 
if your friend it's a, it's a C++ uh, in the committee and a SQL guy, just your SQL, I think it, we may be most of the time focused more on the technical aspect where the, the quality of the people you interact, of the support you can get is also super important because as we all, as Abby say, at the end the only thing will matter is you can port your code against some science results, right? All of these kind of things are just tools and so you should really focus on the one where we, you have support at least. I think it's, it's my take. Yeah. So you, you were mentioning uh, how to move quickly uh, and adopt a programming model. Um, so I'm gonna start throwing the real punches now. <laughs> so for instance, um, so, I, so you know, I started as a user. Um, it wasn't really on me when we started using Cocos, um, but then, uh, you know, obviously I, I got really involved. And um, some, so I like a lot of things about Raja, um, but with what I, what I saw today, um, I, so because you explicitly say um, there's exec execution uh, policy you spell out because you, you make your user spell out CUDA um, that because you have so many template parameters that have to, uh, to work together and um, maybe they exist but you didn't talk about them, traits that helps you choose matching um, things that would work. Um, you, like in the future, if you know there is some new hardware that's in the works that you guys are probably going to support as well, um, if I did the approach that you were showing, like spelling out with an alias, um, this is just I'm going to have to change my not a big change, but I'll have to change my code in the future um, to be able to run on this hardware. And this isn't not true for Cocos. We would that would actually work, uh, you know, out of the box. Sure, um, we could, we, we always have a lot of default policies for all these really specific CUDA or HIP things that, that we've created and for, you know, that we will create for future architectures. So you can just use the default policies and, and life should be okay. The, the very specific policies there are just for even further optimizing your code, right? Um, that, that's that's what I'll just say about th that part, I guess. So maybe one of the big points is about mm, a, a topic. It's about performance portabilities. So so first you need to be portable. It's maybe <laughs> a given, but at least in all these programming models are portable. In theory, you can use them, and you have multiple backends. And the question is about the performance you can get. And I think here nobody believes in the random bullet where you can just have a code with no tuning will run, will run perfectly everywhere. So I think we need to agree that it depends on the application. Some of the application may be agreed to lose 20%, 30% performance and they don't care. Some of them were really want to go deep and to optimize for each uh, hardware. So what do you think in, if it's in, it looks like for that, Raja is really maybe the programming model will give a lot more expressivity for that. It looks like it is right. really one of the strong points of Raja. I don't know. What did you think? So in Cocos is possible, maybe Cocos is... Yeah, I mean... And in SQL is maybe a little less. We have less tuning parameter. Uh, so I mean, it's maybe one of the, the, change, the difference between all these programming models. So um, there, there is a lot of... So first off, I, I would like to tell you that if right now you're thinking you should pick Cocos or Raja or SQL over and over because at this moment one is better than the other for such, such platform or try to do a study over all of them, you're approaching it wrong. You're looking at a snapshot in time. We have smart people in all team. Um, let me tell you, the, um, we asymptotically, we should be just as good as you can obtain with the, you know, with the native uh, vendor programming model. Really keep that in mind. You're wasting your time, in my opinion, when you look at snapshot and someone is gonna find a, um, one small problem where maybe the default heuristic of um, Cocos are not the best, or Raja, you know. 
but so what? You know, we 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 will fix it if it's if it's true. Sometimes it's such a corner case that we do already have in place um, lovers that experts can can use to to you know fill the gap. Um, so so I really want to insist you you shouldn't be looking at it like this. I don't I don't know if one of you want to uh, uh, object or no, add something I, on this. I'm just going to echo what uh, I think one of you said before um, and that if you have experts in Raja or Cocos nearby you, you should just, you know, rely on them, right? And that's kind of how Raja developed at Lawrence Livermore because we application team members needed this sort of functionality and they contributed to Raja and then it just built up from there, right? I'm sure that's the same for Cocos and I'm not sure what it is for for you guys. So, but, oh, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, maybe one thing to to be clear for all the people is at the end, everybody is using the same runtime. For example, in all the CUDA we show, everybody at the end is doing some CUDA call, right? So we all use CUDA call, and we all use more or less the same compiler to go from PTX, I mean, to go to C++ to the binary code, right? So I think most of them are based on ALVM. Are you using, or you have your own backend PTX generator? I, I would argue that you guys use D DPC++. So we use Intel LLVM, we use LLVM, and LLVM, we use the Clang back, and the PTX backend of LLVM. I'm so, pretty sure Coco So we, we support it, so does Raja. I would say one of the strength, in my view, one of the strength of Raja and Cocos is that we don't dictate what tool chain you should be working with. We, we really make sure we will support you know, whatever the vendor is saying. Like when NVIDIA now comes and say, hey, you know, the new compiler we want you to use for uh, C++ is a new N NVHPC uh, compiler, which has a lot of subtlety that makes that some of our code needed to be rewritten. Um, well, we use, we're gonna be using that, comp that compiler and I don't know what it entails for, you know, code that were preview previously written uh, in, in your world. Um, I, I really think that's one, I mean, I, I like SQL, a lot of things, that's what you guys were showing is great. I mean, I, don't, I didn't mention it too much, but we have to use Intel GPUs, Cocos underneath the hood is using SQL. Like, uh, one of our backend is, uh, I mean, you could do, it would be a really weird thing to do, but you could probably uh, implement some Raja uh, with, you know, with Cocos and some um, Cocos with Raja. Um, so, so for me, one, one of the strengths is that Cocos and Raja can work with the, the toolchain, the vendor toolchain. Yeah, it's true. So I think it, it's a big difference between compilers and libraries. I think you saw here uh, Cocos and Raja libraries where SQL, the one we show, are a compiler. So that means we have a, as a compiler, we can do more optimization because we have access of more things. You can do a lot of inlining, constant specialization because when I mean, you have access of more semantic, but the problem is like you are relying on the compiler that maybe not other vendors are using different vendors of different compiler. It's less and less true, right? Everybody is using LLVM now, so everybody are more or less a fork of LLVM. But it is totally correct that you are, maybe with C code, we are maybe losing that. But in the future, if for example, if a lot of people are interested in C code, Maybe CUDA, maybe we'll develop a SQL compiler too, but it is not in our hand to handle. Yeah. So, I mean, I w wanted to believe, uh, you know, so, so Intel was pushing, pushing SQL, right? Mm -hmm. And they were making the case before, oh, look, it's not only us, there's code play uh, mm -hmm. in that, but, you know, now they just bought it. And uh, even though, yeah, I mean, what you were saying, saying is funny because now we have to go through a great deal to differentiate the different clangs because all compilers say, hey, I'm clang. But we, you know, in Raja or Cocos or SQL, we need to know whether, no, not in SQL, in Raja or Cocos, we need to know whether you're using uh, the Intel uh, LLVM-based compiler, whether you're using uh, HeapCC or stuff like that. And it's a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, anyway, um, I lost my train of thought. But <laughs> <laughs> so indeed, SQL at the original was pushed by Intel. Now it's uh, part of the Kronos group. And the main big flagship compiler is DPC++. A lot of people have different implementation. So, for example, you have IpSQL, where it's a strange name, but it is uh, an academia in Germany who 
it, is, it started with a SQL implementation as a library on top of heap, and now they have a support for CUDA, for OpenMP, for HeapSQL. You have also some guy in Japan who do it for their uh, Tsubaka or something like that. But it is true that, yeah, right now it's supported, not yet. Uh, it's mostly an Intel product, you need to be honest. Yeah. Where Raja is more or less uh, Lawrence Livermore and <laughs> Cocos started, so everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. I, I remember the, what I want to tell you concretely. I mean, so to me, as a user, I, f I forget Cocos right now. It's hard to decide to rely on a product that's developed by Intel to target GPUs you know, that are developed by its competitor. Like, I, you know, I wish we could believe that everybody um, buys into it. The vendor independence is really uh, what would make me, f I mean, I, it's, it's trade-off, right? I'm not saying that it would never technical. There's really great things I, I saw today. I, I like a lot of construct. I, I had much more fun in when I look at backends in Cocos working with the SQL part and working with Heap, for instance. But the, the, the vendor independence is the one thing that uh, worries me a bit more about SQL. Yeah, and on the flip side, you have also people say, I don't want to rely on the code we developed, developed by three people in a lab that I don't know. Right, it's just a ECP funding, ECP will end, the Cocos developer will disappear, and no more Cocos. So <laughs> nothing is perfect, you need to choose your poison. Uh, in 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 maybe Intel. So as uh, Argon, we are working with CodePlay, and CodePlay will continue working to, to implement the NVIDIA backend, right? So we have NVIDIA backend for SQL because we are working with CodePlay via ECP to be able to implement. So it's really, yeah. Maybe more trust in so DOE that DOE will pay to have some support for their machines. So, so it, I, I mean that's that's fair. But when you, if you're willing to say that, and you mention HeapSQL was developed by one university, yeah. I mean, come on. Um, so Cocos is a bit ahead of time, uh, ahead of uh, Raja, and that's because we went beyond. I mean, it was originally a Sandia product. Now we, I mean, we have people in Argonne developing. Uh, um, yeah, Livermore is the only place we don't have developers yet, but um, maybe they have policies that they can. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So let me tell you, we're not just anymore three developers, and um, I don't know if you paid attention to the certain statistic I showed you. So Raja has a lot of users, SQL, so does SQL. For Cocos, half of the ECP application that are using C++ users. So we, we will keep living after ECP. For us, we will definitely keep living after ECP, ECP as well because um, a lot of our, most of our major C++ codes have, are, are using Raja right now. And we, they basically are not going to be able to live without it in some sense. So that is our lab's you know, portability solution for the future, at least for now, and until you guys come in and, and Cocofy everything. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, the, I don't see it going away for, for us and Raja. So I have a question for you, uh, Tudor Robert. Mm -hmm. So one of the thing, uh, we were a bit hesitant, uh, you know, so when we, we fully bought in, you know, now Co uh, Oak Ridge and the other labs. Uh, um, so, and one of the important aspects, is it's not Sandia dictating things anymore, right? Sandia has, if they want anything, they, they have to get the, the majority with them. Um, so, you know, the, I'm co-leading the project, it's not just Christian doing stuff. Um, and we, you know, in, not even if Christian and I want something, it's going to necessarily happen. You know, it occasionally happened that other people don't agree. We, we really have to respect the view of other labs. We, would, we want more of our users from other institutions actually to be, uh, to be represented. We are trying to, to spin, uh, spin up a COCOS consortium for that. So my question to you, Robert, is... Um, w what would... Um, so you, you want other users, you know, beyond, you, your goal is not just have users at Livermore, but how, how do you guys resolve conflicts when uh, you might be considering a direction uh, that's not, you know, not, not what your user wants? 
Um, I'm not sure what you mean by resolving a conflict uh, there. So assume I'm in Oak Ridge right now, I'm a user, and I'm saying, or oh, whatever, I want to use Raja. Um, so Raja, the way you, the, I see it very often, it's, it's, a, it's a Livermore project. So Livermore has to defend the interests of their own application. Um, so you guys do regular, I mean, all of us have to do regularly choices in, that may break code. We have to choose direction. We make mistake. We all have made mistake when we had to change. The my my critique of Liver, uh, Livermore's uh, policy is: I think you would only or mostly consider Livermore's stake in it and not not other labs because you don't really have to. Um, I guess in some sense that might be true in that. Our host, or our codes, you now have a preference to use Raja. I don't know of that many Livermore codes that use Cocos. I mean, we we uh, experiment with Cocos occasionally, right, just to see what the difference is. But I believe most of them come back to Raja after experimentation. Um, perhaps more of our outreach and our outside collaboration is kind of with academia. Um, we have a lot of summer students who, uh, actually I, I mentored a summer student last summer who was looking at the differences between Raja and Cocos. I'm not sure what he ended up decided to, deciding to use, but, but uh, he told me some of the good points and, and bad points about each. And you know we didn't like steer him toward Raja or anything. Uh, it, he should use what he feels comfortable with, with it for his application. Um, but yes, uh, I wouldn't say that Raja is like insular on purpose. We're, we're not trying to, to just keep Raja at Livermore. If other uh, places want to use it, that would be, that would be great. Um, I guess we haven't had the same level of outreach that maybe you guys have had. I think uh, Cocos has put on a lot more like Cocos related events than, than we have, at least from my understanding of the history of, of the codes. Can I make a comment on that? So yeah. besides the Livermore aspect of it, a lot of codes in academia currently have their own parallel force. So they're not incentivized to use Raja because they're like, well, we already have our, you know, for example, I was talking to somebody, somebody earlier today, like AMRX Power, Power 4. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's not the fact that it's just Livermore and Raja isn't promoting it. It's like people probably know about it, but they're saying that why, why add another wrapper on top of it if we have Parallel 4 already in our code? So then what's the decision to make? Do we refactor towards Livermore or we refactor towards Sandia? It goes back to the point you were making about how you pick a program in Parallel, a program model. So. Yeah, I, and for that, I think the, the main issue is and what Abby said is maintainability, right? Who do you trust to maintain your code? Do you trust yourself that when all your postdoc will leave, all your <laughs> PhD children will left, you will have a code and you will be able to maintain it. You will be remember all the C++ templating, but at least you own your own code. So if it is only a thin layer, maybe you feel comfortable because you have no dependency and it is great. If it starts being large and you start reinventing the wheel, do a lot of auto-tuning, now maybe start being a, a technical debt on you. You will try to, to offload this maintainability to somebody else and who you trust more. So, some ac academic projects who work really well that everybody use, some industry thing who industry have more like C++, some really they are invested they are in the committee and will may stay longer. So now it's all this question. So I think it really depends on the size of your project, how much you invest. I think one of the trap is starting small and don't want to migrate and at the end you have your own new Cocos or your own new Raja and you need to maintain it and you need to rediscover all this kind of thing and it may be difficult. Yes, please. So I think there is one thing we will all agree on, uh, these guys here. So I've been you know, at the lead of Cocos now for, so I've been in Cocos for three years and I'm leading for more than two years now. and. Uh, let me tell you, it may work. You might have one person that knows very well one of the programming model 
uh, and he, he knows a snapshot of it, right? There is all the architectures that we still have to support and, wh and whatnot. You, you're doing a mistake if you're trying to, to uh, do your own. We have like teams of people who are performance engineers. We have the vendors coming directly and help us occasionally. Uh, and no, it's true for Raja as well, yeah, we I too. expect. Um, you can't, like, you, you underestimate how much, how nasty workaround we have, we have to do in Cocos, in Raja, in SQL, so that you live in a beautiful world where you can, you, you can write raw C++. Do not, not do, you, you should not attempt to do it yourself. Like maybe as an experiment to understand a bit how that may work, but you're, you're fooling yourself if you're doing it yourself. Because um, I, I never really captured the, how true that was before I was the lead, and sometimes it get, get me mad to hear that some obscure compiler, or sometimes something I didn't even think of doesn't compile because it's not ISO compliant, but we still have to support it. You won't be able to do it, let me tell you. We, we have teams of guys who, who work hard to do, it, to do it. Yeah, so getting something simple working in one compiler is easy. Getting something really portable with a lot of tuning because you want to optimize this one, it's a, it's a pain. So you have always this, you know, you do 90% of, of, the, of the feature in, uh, in 10 days and after you took three years to finish the 10% and everybody will need the 10% 10 left, so this is. So maybe to go back to this performance where we say one thing is really helping implementer and libraries if, if you can have a, and you too, if you can create a micro benchmark, a mini app, and you port this mini app to multiple language, and you see the one feel more confident for you, and the good thing is if you can benchmark them, and, and after the slowest, you go and you complain and you say why it is so slow. And this one is really nice because as an implementer, we cannot say anything, right? It is slow, everybody will be pissed off, and we say, okay, we will fix it. Well, if you just come and you say, oh, it's slow, but you didn't show any point of comparison, it's really harder for us. So having benchmark and putting us in competition really improve all the ecosystem because we've, we've, sometimes we see some patterns that we never thought about. And if you, if you see it, you say, okay, yeah, yeah, we can optimize that for sure. So I think mini apps in different programming model make some nice and easy paper, which is always nice for <laughs> PhD people and uh, postdoc, and also really help the community and also, yeah improve you to, to be able to make a choice. I have a question for the attendees. How many of you have asked this question of choosing a portable programming model before attending AdPask? It could be influenced by your PI or the, or, uh, or that advisor. How many of you asked that question? Half a dozen. They have no choice. Half a dozen, it is yeah. open MP, that's it. I mean, I believe all these raised hands are uh, domain scientists and not computational scientists or computer scientists. Is that true? Okay. Yeah, majority of them are domain scientists. So it's, it's very hard to ask that question from a domain science perspective, like uh, the choice of programming model, uh, the portability. All these questions is itself uh, uh, time-consuming to ask us. Uh, Daniel was uh, Damien was pointing out it's a team that does the hard work such that you just write a wrapper around your constructs to do the real science. Once you start asking these questions, how does these wrappers work? Are they performant? That takes you down a rabbit hole and deviates you from the focus of am I doing the science that I'm uh, assigned to? So. It's, it's just this question of um, choosing the programming model and, and, and am I investing the right amount of time? Uh, and, and at the same time, you should ask the question, am I, doing, am I investing the same amount of time or good amount of time for the science? Because at the end of the day, all we are measured is how impactful is your science? It's, it's that simple. So uh, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm surprised that the handful of domain scientists who asked this question on, on, on portability, choice of programming models, rather than just people write their uh, uh, prototypes in MATLAB. If it works, yeah, we have the answer. 
and move on from that. Uh, but uh, asking these questions is, is quite hard, and, and I'm, I'm surprised and happy that people are investing time into this. Yeah, and uh, to add to that, you, you might often not know what questions to ask. Like um, the example that I showed in my presentation was the Chai Manage Pointer, which takes care of this obscure thing where the GPU doesn't know how to get the virtual table, right? And it took three-ish teams or so to kind of solve this at Lawrence Livermore. So by you, if you, you know, adopt that, then, then you would be benefiting from all of our, our, our labor and stuff. Okay. And there's many more other types of these kinds of issues that, that went on in the development of Raja Giant Umpire too. Yes, so before coming here for, and when we talked about the exascale computing and all, so I, my understanding was that we need to keep removing the abstraction layers and go to the bare minimum so that we can go higher. But in, here we see one abstraction layer after another and <laughs> on top of that another. And how does it, was my understanding completely, completely wrong or how does it work? So, um, so if you're here, you start asking yourself the right question, what, what does really matter at the end of the day uh, for the performance of your application? And if you use any of the solution, you will get a deeper understanding that there are few hot kernel in your application that actually matter and that, that they are the ones that are gonna make the difference. Um, and uh, so there's, you, the, the abstraction we have is nothing. I mean, you virtually nothing uh, between, uh, between you as a user of Cocos or Raja and the programming model from the vendor. Um, all the other things in your program, that, that took me, because I mean, I was savvy in C++ for a long time, but I'm, I'm still kind of new to HPC myself. Um, you you learn you need to learn what actually matters in your code and this you will only discover via profiling and and tooling yeah i think you have so it's a, it's a really good observation that we have these conflicts between be able to control everything and be able to be abstract to be able to to be general and to be efficient so i think the key is you, your code should be modular and you should as we as he said be really focused on some of few kernel. So you should design your code to be really modular. So object-oriented at 20 level deep will not be performance because at the end you don't know what to do, right? Yeah, uh, but as talking about the, I, I am a Fortran user. I, I have been, uh, I code in Fortran only. Uh, so as a Fortran user, C++ still seems to me like too much of abstraction and too much of performance over it. And, no, <laughs> and on top of that, you bring Cocos, Raza, and everything in there. I, I don't know. <laughs> you are not a modern Fortran people, no. So because in modern Fortran, everybody uses module. <laughs> no, no, but you're right. So in C++, you need to be careful indeed. Object-oriented can give you really, really difficult to understand code. What we are talking here are what we like to call to lie to ourselves zero-cost abstraction. Right? They are just convenient wrapper, but we don't do, for example, Cocos. They don't do any memory allocation. So what, everything what you see will be optimized away because the compiler in C++ are really good at removing that. So you think it is complex. If you look at the assembly, nothing is there. Everything is just some nice, same in C curl, a lot of these things. And because we target GPUs, the only thing will matter at first approximation is the quality of your code that you put inside your device code. This is what takes time. And in this one, because GPU are stupid, it forces you to not put anything. You cannot instantiate virtual object and do some crazy inheritance inside your kernel code. Inside your kernel code, you will need to do really raw. You don't use STD vector because you cannot allocate memory. So it forces you to write efficient code because you have no choice. What is outside, it doesn't matter because if it is not on the GPU, it, is not, it should not be, <laughs> no need to be fast.
So I think this is an abstraction between C++, who indeed is really slow because you can do crazy things, and C++ for GPUs, where we give abstraction just as a convenience, as a wrapper around low-level things. Who do not have. I hope it's kind of clear. If you can clarify. I cannot help myself to say, uh, uh, to tick when you say C++ is slow. That's uh, being in on the, I'm on, I'm representing Oak Ridge at the uh, ISO C++ committee. If you uh, ever read a bit about what is our number one concern. So yes, you can write terrible thing in C++. Y if you want, you can make things terrible, but um, the standard library, what these guys are doing, what we're doing, uh, you're, not gonna do be you're not gonna do better in Fortran. Like if you, in, like, let me tell you, in general, you'll find a few uh, corner cases that I wouldn't even consider, but if you can write a non-trivial kernel and you can beat what any of us do, you belong to our team. And, like, there's no, there's n not, you, I doubt that you will often find real true thing where you can beat what, what this programming model do. Yeah, I think it was more, an abstraction was a more at the application. Right, it's not a problem of the language, it's a problem of the code architectures that you can write your code badly. It's nothing to do with C++, it's more, be, more code architectures that it's hard to design. But it's true everywhere, right? You yeah, can yeah always it's true in Fortran, you can do horrible code in Fortran too, it's just, it's harder in Fortran because you don't have template, you, so the code is more, it's like in C, it's even harder. C++ allow you to take a bazooka and shoot you in the foot, right? So, that's it, but I agree. Yeah, so if anybody can beat a gem, for example, in MKL, I think you have a job. Uh, you can just uh, call Intel and they will employ you. Oh, oh it, the mic is going. It, it seems like Cocos has uh, baked in profiling as a first class um, capability. Do Sickle and Raja have a similar um, way to instrument for profiling? Yeah, um, we have a tool called Caliper that we're uh, in the process of integrating into Raja and basically this allows you to mark parts of your code and look at the performance. Um, it's in progress right now, we're not quite done with it. But yes, that, that's coming soon. Yeah, so in SQL, we have nothing. <laughs> so we are trying to pushing as our goal to, to have some callback mechanism and everything to be able to, for tools, to be able to profile only a SQL kernel. So right now, we just rely on whatever, not NVProf, I don't remember what is a new, in, Insight. Yeah, we rely on this one to be able to, but this one gives you really the CUDA, and the CUDA performance not yet at the SQL, and I think we really need to, this is why it's nice to have collaboration, or, because it's really something we need to do in the SQL community. We need to push to have this kind of possibilities of instrumenting directly at the SQL level and not at the back end. It is something we are missing. So if anyone here is, uh, <laughs> have a passion for tooling, uh, designing tooling interface, uh, please feel free to, to reach to me. Oh yeah, I'll also add that, um, I didn't show this, but Kind of like Cocos, we have a way to name your kernels as well, so that you can actually see the, the names come out in the Insight or, or uh, NVProf profiler. So yeah, there's an API in Raja to do that already. Yeah, this one we have uh, also in Seeker, <laughs> name uh, Lambda, so yeah, you can at least put me. abstraction, I guess, and regardless if you use C++ or modern Fortran. And uh, I'm a modern Fortran developer, and we use, uh, we have this modular code base. Um, but we have really resorted to like HippoCuda natively. Uh, and kind of the idea is that you should be able to change regardless how, how things progress, right? We don't know in a few years which GPU programming language is going to, well, be the prevailing one. But even in this case, I mean, we have some kernel duplication going on, right, since we need to maintain. Uh, in this case, do you still, do you see benefits of using yours, even though you have this kind of, uh, well, if you say, modular code base, or so to speak? Uh, 
um, so you remember when I was uh, when I started and I was trying to show you the cost of moving your moving your code base to use a new uh, uh, a new abstraction. If you adopt one of this programming system, you you're gonna pay the cost once, and then then we if there's something something new that come around, you know I yeah I I don't know I might be in Oak Ridge and we you know we use AMD GPU. When AMD is gonna re realize that they probably did a mistake with HIP, and that they should do something else, well, Kokos and Raja are gonna pay the price, not you. Right. Yeah, if next machine would be FPJ, I don't know. You don't want to start writing your code in FPJ, right? You 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 really want to to give up. So I think the really maybe. I say on the slack, the key is to try to route your kernel to have some, even in Fortran, to have easy C API so you can extract. So for example, you use ISOC binding and you extract it, and it's okay. Now you can have a Fortran calling a Fortran via ISOC binding, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. We yeah. have this device abstraction layer in, in exactly. Fortran, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you do that, porting mm. to Cocos or even to CUDA or everything will not be too hard because most of the applications don't have so many kernels. What is really maybe harder is to incorporate all those different language inside your big application. But if you did this effort of modularity, porting is really, really less painful. I think the, the people who have really a lot of difficulty porting their code is the people who have really like a non-tangle, really complicated apps. Um, so I agree with you that once you I mean, most of this programming model will help you uh, lay it out correctly. Uh, uh, this is not as bad as I might have said it, but the thing is, if you go to raw CUDA or raw hip, and you are gonna try to tune yourself, choose these block sizes and things like that, you're gonna have a hard time, and and that's that's really where uh, that, that's why I think one of the programming uh, programming models you've seen today is a superior choice. So, so I think I mentioned at the beginning of my talk that I actually work on a Fortran code that is ported to the GPU, right? And um, we have actually a couple of our kernels written in CUDA C, and you know we have the appropriate C Fortran interface to do that. But it's um, it was painful to write, and now we're getting we're thinking of getting new machines, right? Now we have to do it all over again. <laughs> So if we had ported it to Raja or Cocos, we wouldn't have to rewrite these algorithms again. And you know, doing that, those couple algorithms took maybe the better part of two years, maybe, because um, they're very hefty, right? They're they're the largest kernels that we have. Um, so yeah, I would encourage you to to. Uh, try a portability solution like one of ours, it, even if you write Fortran code. Yeah. Because keep in mind that it's not. Sometimes it's not even just um, um, mo you know, moving to another uh, um, programming model. Sometimes it's even new architecture come come up, and and there's new levers to optimize for it. You you will have to learn. Um, vendor jargon in great detail to get the performance. And that, that's somewhere where um, applications that we are running on Summit using Raja or that could use, SQL is a bit newer, but it would, would have been true as well. If you were able to write something that's performant on Summit with SQL, when Frontier comes online, you're gonna hit the, the floor running. Like that's, we, we have very good uh, feedback right now with our applications. Ours too, right? Um, we, our uh, CUDA machine was Sierra, right? And we used a lot of the application codes used Raja to port to Sierra, but now we're coming up with LCAP, and LCAP is a HIP AMD GPU machine, and a lot of the um, applications who that used Raja um, are experiencing. Uh, much more ease of running on this new LCAP, uh, on the new LCAP experimental systems that we're getting, uh, because they've they've used Raja, right? We we've taken care of all this stuff under the hood for for them. Uh, so yeah, our our experience mirrors what what Cocos 
I didn't mean to imply. I mean, no. I put it in the same boat. I, I expected that. Yeah. yeah. I think it was a point that at some point CUDA, everybody was using CUDA because, and after the exascale arrived, then no machine is using CUDA. So now everybody was in panic, say, oh, what is the myth? My mile, <laughs> I did a billion of line of CUDA, and now I had to trash it away. So maybe it will serve at a listen. And, uh, that sometimes you may want to use a lower level if you think you are smarter than uh, the runtime because you are really doing something really, really specific. If you, if like Abby say, you just want to be on the science, so you, you want to code your code to be as stupid as possible just to get the correct answer. And I think this is what you should not put too much smartness in <laughs> the code and more on the science and something like that and just give possibilities for the lowest level parts, like Cocos, so Seeker, right, right to, to be able to do their thing and maybe not try to over-engineer this, this part of your code. And yeah, maybe. Yeah, I always lose sight of what Abby was saying, that some people might not care uh, um, about getting the last bit of performance. Uh, there, if you're only looking at that, you should really look at productivity, what, what programming model you feel let you uh, get where you want the easiest. But I, even, even when you're obsessed with performance, like we are, you know, I always get back to that, I, I still think the right choice is one of us. So I have a, a friend who do Monte Carlo, and he say, if the performance is less than, t less than the magnitude different, I don't care, because I will just ask for more node hour, and I will get the same science done. So it's really depend of your application, right? Performance. Portability, this one is unnegotiable. You should be able to run everywhere. It's the most important thing. Performance, it depends really, really for a lot of application and what you want to do. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. So uh, Sickle was initially designed, as you heard, for Intel's upcoming exascale machine. It was never envisioned or on paper, it was, yeah, it was called portable. No one, me neither believed it. Um, it so the entire portability story on, of running Sickle on the Perlmutter or any AMD machines was just realized in the past uh, two to three months because I have never even tried uh, or even thought about running Sickle on other uh, hardware vendors. The first question is the availability of compilers uh, do I have enough libraries? Is it worth the effort? So if you had, uh, so I already had a Sickle code which was ported from CUDA using whatever tools. Uh, and, and we were running on, on Intel hardware, uh, Intel testbeds. Uh, it was okay. So the, the, the obvious question is like, can we run this on non-Intel hardware? Uh, and, and uh, yeah, it worked on, on, on single node, one GPU. The next question is single node, multi GPUs. And obviously, several people were asking this feasibility question. I have MPI. What's the story with it? Can I scale? So, yes, uh, we did run a few test, ca test cases on Perlmutter for hundreds of nodes, and also on AMD architectures over hundred, uh, hundreds of nodes. So, yeah, this was. This developed quite short in a sh quite uh, short span of time, that even no one envisioned for. Uh, so yeah, it's it's I would say it's a, it's free lunch for us uh, when we touched Sickle uh, to be a portable programming model. Uh, so it's just a matter of like how long can we maintain it? Uh, is the user base strong, and 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 is the time commitment that one needs to put is good enough? Uh, that I mean. A PhD student would consider it for like four years. Uh, a tenured professor would consider it for a different time span. A PI would consider it for a different time span. So it's just a question of, given the time span and the research thrust you're working on, it's, it's just that scope. No one wants to work on this for, forever. Even our narratives would change with, with a different programming model or hopefully not, uh, with a different machine. It's just a question of uh, what's the time, uh, the time span that the project uh, and the research thrusts are active. Uh, so yeah, it all boiled down to that. And, and, and it was very fortunate that the Perlmutter uh, came online and Sickle compilers were ready and, and, it was, uh, and it was open source and everyone was contributing it. And that's the reason uh, today you cloned uh, nightly. 
and 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 uh, the question was like, can we use like the latest developer with the latest masters, uh, right? So yeah, if you see the, even the commits, I mean, you don't need, need to look at it. You just read the commit message. It says CUDA, sickle. Out of ten, you would see uh, quite a few of them. So the development is so much uh, that domain scientists or even the computation scientists who are involved in science needs uh, doesn't need to worry about asking these questions like, is it even working? Will it even work? Um, so all these questions ha were taken care of by vendors and, and the libraries. They, they do, that's what they paid for, to do the job. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the beauty of it. Uh, what's, what, what, is, what is the right programming model? I mean, if you have four kernels, and that's all you do, and you want the best performance, people put efforts to, okay, I'll write CUDA, and I know very well, so I'll just replace CUDA with HIP. If I did for these two, I'll just maintain SQL. So you would do them, uh, you would maintain all these things. But this morning you have heard from, uh, in the Cocos lecture that E3SM is one, pro one such project which has 100, 100K lines or even 1 million lines. It's, it's quite complex. So it's, 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 it's first a no-go even to maintain it for a performance. I mean, yeah, given infinite time, infinite resources, it's almost impossible. So the obvious answer, a question, a answer to this is portable solution. And you would take a hit. There is no, there's no, uh, th that's the real approach. You would take a hit of performance for in choice of portability and maintenance. And, and, and that's the story. I have, I have a very short question. I can do that. So Damien, you mentioned this morning, uh, Pi Cocos. Should we be writing our high performance computing application in Python from now on? <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, so I have, uh, so, you know, I'm, that's what I, that's where I want to go. Like, I'm not even kidding. Uh, I've, so Christian and I, um, the other lead from Cocos, we sit with this team. So the the, the Pi Cocos effort uh, was started uh, separately in uh, in NERSC, and there is UT Austin was working on it, and they they're collaborating now, and we took them under the Cocos organization, and we threw more people at at it. I have uh, an excellent PhD student now who works with me on this. That's where I would like to be um, next year. Like, I'm not even kidding. So the type of thing we're trying to do is, you saw this lambda, we, we try to keep all of us as simple as possible, the computational body, so that you could write them directly in Python so that we go and do a just-in-time compilation of, uh, of, of it. Uh, it's, uh, it's an ongoing effort. I don't know when it will be ready, but that's, that's where I would like to be uh, so that you know, you can write your fully pledged application uh, in Python, and the one, the one part that matter, um, you use hopefully Cocos, or maybe when these guys are going to get to it uh, underneath the hood, you use uh, one of our, our programming model. Yeah, I think it go back to the story we say about modularity. If your code is modular, it's perfect because you can call in Python everything, and only this kernel you call it. So I think. Uh, we saw, I don't remember some apps, but some apps have that, right? Where their driver is in Python, and only the key kernel are written in C, C++, SQL, whatever they want to use. So it's, it's a pattern that we see in some. It needs a lot of code architecture development, but after it's really convenient as a developer. So in, uh, in PyCocos, actually, uh, no, and it's not a unique solution. I mean, you guys, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you, I mean, just start having people in your own community doing that. Do uh, you actually write this computational body directly in, uh, yeah. you keep doing them in Python. So that's where I would like to be. I, I'm one of the other projects uh, I still work on and I was on before Cocos is doing, it's graph algorithms and searching for object in space and um, you know it's Cocos or any of the other solution is awesome because we can focus on the actual algorithm. Uh, there is a lot of you know still thinking about the data structure but we can really actually focus on algorithms thanks to programming models. And a lot of the things we developed, I, I'm telling you right now, if I had had Python, even though I'm, you know, I'm obsessed with C++, I dream C++, uh, I, would, I would write a lot of, you know, I would write a lot of it in Python because 
this is so much faster, so the productivity is much higher with it. Yeah, all the machine learning people, they all use Python, right? So the framework, all the machine learning people really put Python in HPC, I guess. Three years ago, four years ago, if you were saying Python in this kind of environment, everybody would have love. And now it's just everybody agrees that Python is valid. So you have this kind of challenge and everything, but because it's really kernel based, so we offload only the critical part to the GPUs, so whatever else for the non critical part, so it's good. I don't, I don't think I do. I'm good. Thanks. Uh, this is a question for all of you, but I think it was the Coco's talk that you mentioned using natural C language constructs like Lambda instead of directives like an OpenMP. Or, and I'm wondering what your all your thoughts are on the trade-offs of doing that, which choosing which one and why. When when is one good and when is one not as good? Which makes why? So he will say never, never use Pragma. It is your answer. Yeah. yeah, so I think Pragma is a problem. It's like it's really hard. So now in OpenMP, I don't think a lot of uh, implementers do it, but you have meta, meta Pragma. So you, you can do a little bit more generic, but before the big problem with Pragma was to be generic. So let's say you have a code that you want to run on the CPU and the GPUs. In OpenMP, you need some if dev to be able to offload the target and everything. So it was really, really painful. So your code is really hard to read and after this pragma or multi-line. But to get started, if you, back in the day where uh, OpenMP was just a CPU, it was really easy to get people started, right? No, with OpenMP 5, uh, for GPU is a little more harder because you need to explain, but it's still for simple code, OpenMP with just pragma is really simple. And you can compile your code without OpenMP because the pragma will be in your. So back in the day, it was really a good selling point because not all the people were implementing OpenMP and you are like, oh, I don't care because my code will still compile. So it was one of the big advantage of pragma. Now it's less and less common, right? Like everybody is supporting OpenMP. So I think pragma is maybe something from the, the past. <laughs> I think it was a good, uh, a step to get where we are, but maybe now in C++ at least, it looks like, I don't, I don't know a lot of C++ developer who like pragmas, to be honest, but maybe, I don't know. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about the Fortran code and I'll, I'll talk about it because the other portability solution we use for that is actually OpenMP target, which, you know, allows you to write OpenMP pragmas, but it, throws it onto the GPU for you, right? And in our Fortran code, when we use these pragmas, um, we, we preface some loops with like 10 to 20 lines of these pragmas. And <laughs> that's because it's Fortran, that's, that's part of the, the problem. But if you're, you don't wanna do this in C or C++ either, right? And so Raja, and I'm sure Coco uh, takes care of this for you in, in many senses, right? You don't, you didn't see any pragmas in, in the Raja code. We, we've hidden all of that for you. And if you, if we ever needed to remove all these pragmas and, and do a different non-pragma, you know, non-OpenMP algorithm in our Fortran code, this would be very, very difficult. I would pretty much say the same thing. Uh, just because in Fortran, there's no choice. <coughs> So uh, I, I would just take the same stance as uh, 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 that pragma is definitely not uh, a choice or should be a choice for C, C++. And for Fortran, there is no other uh, uh, alternative. I mean, if there is, a, if there is one, yeah. Uh, the, the, the level of effort that you put in with pragmas and the other programming models or the languages is pretty much the same, approximately same. So that, that's my take. Uh, you will hear a wide range of answers. The, the, the statistics are very poor uh, on, on, on Pragmas. So if it is Fortran, yeah, that's the only solution. 
if it is C, C++, I would search for other alternatives. So Damien need to left because to go back to the airport, so now we can say all the bad things about Cocos. <laughs> the error message are horrible. If you make one mistake, you have 20 pages of template error. You don't ever know what to do. I would say try to find the error. Yeah, you cannot find the error. It's like, where is window? You need to find it. Try to it. scroll it in your terminal. Exactly. You need to pipe more to just to be able to see it. It's <laughs> it is true, it is true. We are making a call to make your own message. You went readable. Thank you, everybody. One more question. So I caught that uh, Raja has some new support for uh, runtime selection of the like, uh, I'm not sure about Kogos, but I thought they have that capability. Yeah, so everybody, uh, everybody has that in C++, as we saw. I think C++ is really maybe the most explicit of all because you can loop over all the platform and for each platform you can choose your device and from this device you can write this queue. So you can have multiple queue, queue in flight targeting different devices. Uh, so it's really explicit because if you want to run on one device, you just use this queue. So it's really explicit. Where maybe I think you is the uh, execution policy, right? You create different execution policy right. for different devices and you use right. it. We just have to, for us, like I showed you, we, we have to specify all the execution policies that we want for host and device. And then at runtime, you can uh, twiddle the, the, the zero one variable and it will do, do what you want. Yeah. And, and Sickle, I would just add to that, what Thomas explained is a compile time dispatching where you, have, where you just loop over the, the hardware uh, platforms and then create queues. The queues would dispatch to that particular hardware. There is another way where you ha uh, there's something called as runtime dispatching. If you just add dash CUDA, dash hip, all the flags, and if you, ha if you see CUDA and HIP uh, in, the, in the module environment, it would, the compilers would be built for that. And with just an uh, environment flag, you could switch the, uh, 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 the runtime backend. And, and the runtime uh, and the environment variable is already existent. Um, so yeah, it's, it, there, are, there are two ways. One is uh, the compile time dispatching and one is runtime dispatching. Any other question? For the left, uh, we have I 15 minutes. Yeah, one more please question. go ahead. Uh, this is for Raja. Uh, I noticed that Focus has uh, initialized and finalized. I didn't see I saw that in uh, Raja. There are no initialized or finalized uh, constructs in Raja. Each for all, each kernel, each launch, they're self contained. So, so once you're done with that for all kernel or launch, then you're back on the host. Oh, one more. Yeah, I'm just missing stuff. You mean you don't you don't send the data necessarily, right? Or uh, so you uh, right? We don't send the data. You have to still move your data uh, before and after, right? So maybe to finish, I will uh, let you say one good thing about another programming model, and uh, same for Avi. So if you can, uh, you can choose if you want to say one good thing about Cocos and SQL, and Abby about uh, Cocos or Raja. Who want to start? I have to think. Give me. <laughs> <laughs> That's very diplomatic. Uh, there's nothing good. Each programming model has its own advantages and disadvantages. What is Give a nice answer. What is this well, the, thing? The oh, nice answer know. is, <laughs> like, pick your interest. <laughs> there's, there's the, 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 like, anyone does not solve everything. So, yeah. I mean, I have, I've been a user for Cocos, Raja, and Sickle. So, it's, it's hard to say that this is the best and those two are the worst. No, 
I just say one good thing about not the best. You don't even say one good thing about. Uh... Oh, there are plenty. <laughs> it's 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 hard to choose one. Oh, okay. It's 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 okay. bloody plenty. <laughs> uh, one good thing about SQL is it's its um, uh, relevance to the existing CUDA. So much of uh, the the way I learned any 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 new programming model to learn is is quite uh, time consuming. So if you know any GPU programming model, it's easy to correlate things. All you need to do is learn syntax, just do some Googling, that's all. Uh, that's the best at the, or, the, or the good thing I would point out. So I've mainly used Raja, and I've looked at a little bit of Cocos, and I've used a little bit of Sickle. Um, for Raja, I'd say, or for Cocos, I'd say they have a lot of uh, some cool advanced features. I think. Um, their implementation of C++23's MD span is pretty cool. Uh, I like that. They have, I believe, like a, um, uh, a composable uh, parallelism model, whereas like Raja has a loop parallelism model. They have chunks of, um, I guess, objects that you can compose into, into very different computations. Um, and for Raja, I like that um, I like my own experience with using Raja. Again, uh, I was able to very incrementally mod modify my code uh, in a very like small piece manner, and uh, I could do uh, experiment uh, a little bit at a time with it until I got my application going fully with Raja. Um, actually, I don't have enough experience with Sickle to say anything concrete about it, so I, I'm going to have to skip, but that's not because it's, it's bad or anything. <laughs> it's okay. uh, that's it, so thank you very much all. I hope you learn a few things and uh, yeah, give you more uh, knowledge to, to do any uh, decision. I don't know why it's decision or not, but at least some decision for your future of your program. Thank you very much. <laughs>